Hi, everyone, this is the Encyclopedia Channel, and the book that this program interprets for you is Minimalism. In recent years, the wave of minimalist lifestyle has become popular in the United States, the most influential representatives of which are the authors of this book, Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus. They created a website promoting minimalism, with more than 4 million followers, and their stories were reported by Time, Forbes, New York Times and other media. Their minimalist life philosophy and practice have allowed many people to live a life that improves their happiness index by occupying less items and energy. So, what is minimalism? How to achieve minimalism, and what principles should be paid attention to? After listening to this episode, you will understand. To sum up the point of this book in one sentence, minimalism is a thinking tool that encourages people to remove the unimportant things in their lives and focus on the most important things. The concept of minimalism originally referred to a school of art. In recent years, it has spread into the realm of lifestyle. What this book talks about only refers to minimalism in lifestyle and philosophy. The author of this book, Joshua, has always presented himself as a young and promising elite. He is a corporate executive, looks very happy, has a beautiful wife, has an annual salary of one million when he was in his early twenties, and owns luxury cars and mansions. He is a workaholic, giving himself less than five days off a year. In fact, he was under a lot of pressure and became more and more unhappy, so he hoped that the things that the media would hype would make people happy, and kept buying and buying, but he found that doing so just piled up more garbage at home, the short-lived pleasure brought by each purchase dissipates in an instant, and the sense of happiness does not increase. After several life changes, the death of his mother, divorce, Joshua, whose life fell to the bottom, was determined to change his life. He lost 90% of the things in his home and finally there were only 288 items left, but each of them was irreplaceable. Short. He even quit his job and cancelled the internet at home to live a minimalist life. This kind of life allowed Joshua to focus more on realizing his dreams, reading, and influencing others, and he felt unprecedented freedom. Later, with his help, his good friend Ryan lived a minimalist life in just 21 days. This book records some of their suggestions and reflections on lifestyle during the 10 years of practicing minimalism. Next, we will interpret this minimalism for you from three aspects. Part 1, How did Joshua get on the minimalist path? In the second part, we will introduce two thinking tools of minimalism, one is the influence lever that enhances execution, and the other is the anchor that helps us reduce the burden of attention. This book mainly shares the concept of minimalism, and there are more practical suggestions on their website Minimalists, so in the last part, we have selected a few items mentioned on their website and will be able to share your tips to get started. Now, let's get to know the book. First part. If you want to try minimalism, you must first release your obsession with objects. But he would be reluctant to throw away most of his belongings to anyone. In fact, this reluctance is a normal emotional link between people and things. Among the many reluctant stories, the most difficult story we read in the book is also the opportunity for Joshua to start minimalism. After Joshua's mother died in 2009, he went to sort through her belongings. Her mother's home is filled with her collection of antique furniture and art, worth more than three apartments at market prices. Joshua found out that trucking and renting storage to store the stuff cost almost $10,000 a year, but he had lost his mom and he didn't want to lose her stuff. So he spent a week packing all his mother's belongings by himself. He found four sealed boxes under the bed that contained every piece of paper Joshua had scribbled on in elementary school. Apparently, the mother hadn't opened the sealed boxes for years, and even so, she kept them because she wanted to keep all the footage of her son's upbringing, just as Joshua was trying to keep everything about her now. Joshua suddenly understood that her mother didn't need to remember him with the help of things from 25 years ago, she didn't need to open those boxes under the bed, she always remembered his childhood and everything about him, just as he didn't need to remember him now remember mom with a room full of relics. The signs of mom are everywhere, in the way Joshua behaves, even in his smile. Mom was there all the time, but she wasn't in those things, and objects of affection weren't as important as we thought. Over the next week, Joshua made the difficult decision to donate all of his mother's belongings to charity. These objects, which Joshua saw only added to the melancholy, might have practical uses for others. 
The point is, he understands one thing, which is at the heart of minimalism, the things we own don't represent us. Joshua then realized that in this era of advocating consumerism, people not only place emotions on objects, but also believe in objects. People always believe that happiness can be obtained by sticking to what they believe in. Many people choose to worship material things. Once they feel unhappy, they will keep buying, as if they believe that owning clothes, shoes, bags, luxury houses and famous cars will lead to real happiness. Once you can't buy it, you will not be happy. Really? Joshua thinks buying things to get pleasure is highly suspicious. He suggested that we list the 10 most valuable things we own, such as cars and houses, and then write down the 10 things that make you feel the happiest, such as playing with children and getting together with family. You will find that the most precious things provide at best certainty, and that they have little to do with the happiest experience. Losing his mother made him feel very sad. He found that he had been neglecting his loved ones, which should be one of the most important things, lots of useless items. At this moment, Joshua read the story of Colin right on the internet. Colin is a writer and self-proclaimed minimalist. Colin is always on the go, his entire possession consists of only 72 items, and his entire possession fits in his backpack. What Joshua envied the most was that Colin radiated happiness, excitement and enthusiasm all over his body. He loved his life. Joshua admires Colin very much, but doesn't want to live like him. He doesn't intend to travel the world, nor does he want to own fewer than a hundred items. So Joshua began to explore, is there any other way to be as happy and free as Colin, and live a decent life in the city? The second part. Joshua found that if he wanted to improve his happiness index and quality of life, he had to distinguish between priorities. To distinguish between priorities is to know what is important and what is not. Here, Joshua gives the two most important thinking tools in a minimalist life. First of all, in the face of important things, we need to enhance our execution. Making good use of the influence lever can help us enhance our execution. What is a leverage of influence? You can understand it as, facing an important but not urgent matter, we can encourage ourselves to realize it by increasing its urgency. The reason is actually very simple. For example, if you tell yourself seriously I must exercise, the execution ability brought about by you discussing with yourself and saying I should exercise is obviously different. If you want to achieve some goals, you have to change should into must, I must read every day, I must quit smoking. Because a new habit doesn't stick, it's often because we don't see long-term benefits from the change. When you have to do something, you can't choose to say no. Minimalists choose to get rid of unnecessary things and focus on important things, and what is important in life and what is superfluous is entirely up to you. If you don't know what must-do things are, you can refer to Joshua's suggestion. He believes that the five key words of life are health, relationship, enthusiasm, growth, and dedication. He believes that investing time and energy in these keywords is the most important, especially health. For example, Joshua set himself a rule of exercising for at least 18 minutes a day. Most of us spend at least 3 or 4 hours on our mobile phones every day. Even 5 or 6 hours, 18 minutes a day to take care of your body is not excessive. Exercise and caring for family members are important but not urgent things, but the important and not urgent things are often the most important because of the compound interest of time. Minimalism is about encouraging people to be conscious and remember the most important things at all times, because sobriety is the most precious freedom. Prioritizing what you think is important, rather than being led by trivialities and objects, can make a complex world simple and real. Second, get rid of the unimportant things. The specific suggestion is to reduce the burden of our attention by reflecting on the anchor. When we let go of the superfluous things in our lives, we can better prioritize. What is an anchor? An anchor refers to everything that prevents us from living a happy and fulfilling life. For example, Joshua used to work hard to get the big house and high salary he so wanted. He had a successful career and got these things, but he wasn't happy. The first step in solving a problem is to recognize the problem. Joshua tried to write down all the unhappy things in one week, which was the anchor in his life. You can also take a piece of paper and try to list your anchor, Joshua actually listed 83 anchors. He then prioritized the listed anchors into two categories, 
primary anchors and secondary anchors. Primary anchors are those things that most obviously block our freedom, including houses and mortgages, meaningless social relationships, jobs that kill, and other things that take a lot of time without adding commensurate value to life. Secondary anchors make up the bulk of the list, including cable bills, internet bills, clothes we don't wear, furniture that gets in the way, clutter, daily commutes, and other little things that consume little of our time and attention. Getting rid of the anchor will buy us a lot of time that is ours. The main anchors seem to be the most difficult to deal with, so he started with this part. For example, in the past Joshua earned a six-figure monthly salary, but every extra penny he earned was wasted and even left him with additional debt. Debts and loans have kept him from quitting his job, and he has been too scared to try his dream of becoming a full-time writer. To get rid of the anchor, he stopped eating fancy dinners and buying the latest electronics. Finally, after two years, he paid off all his loans and debts, quit his job, unplugged one anchor after another, concentrated on reading and writing, and chased his dreams. Unexpectedly, after quitting his job, he became more successful, and more importantly, he was happier and freer. The third part. Most modern people have a secondary anchor, which is too much useless objects and too much useless information. The problem is, when we try to streamline items, we always get stuck at first. In a pile of items, it is really difficult to decide which ones are useful and which ones are useless. Therefore, we need to use some rules to help us better examine items. Joshua made a series of life experiments to trim down his belongings. He has summarized some rules and published them on his website. The first rule for the wardrobe, the best to use is actually the season rule. Take an item you want to dispose of, preferably clothing, and ask yourself, have you used it in the past 90 days? If not, do you plan to use it in the next 90 days? For example, if spring is here, you plan to change the season of the wardrobe and do a big cleaning. You picked up an old sweater. You can ask yourself, recently, that is, spring, are you wearing this dress? In the past 90 days, that is, winter, have you worn this dress? In the next 90 days, which is summer, will you wear this dress? If you answered yes to any of these three questions, then you can keep the dress. If not, you can throw the garment away, give it away, or donate it. 90 days before and after, that is, almost half a year, is enough to cover most of the clothing needs and weather temperature throughout the year. There is another classification method, which is more general than the seasonal rule. No matter it is in a drawer or in a home, the items inside can actually be divided into three piles, the first pile is the necessities. We can't live a normal life without these things, such as food, house, clothes, and so on. Each of us has similar necessities. The second pile is non-essentials. Ideally, most of our items should belong in this pile. These things make our lives better, such as sofas, bookshelves, and dining tables. For example, in fact, I can do without a bookshelf, but with a bookshelf, I will manage my books more conveniently. The third pile is garbage. It's a pity that most of people's things fall into this category, and in this pile of garbage, there are many things that belong to, and we think we like them, but in fact they don't bring us joy. For example, souvenirs bought from travel, clothes, shoes and bags that have never been worn, such as ornaments and toys piled up in the corners of the walls. Trash will be left in your room pretending to be useful, when you have nothing to lose without them. If you're downsizing, you should start with this pile of stuff. In addition to throwing garbage, it is more important not to buy garbage. Being a minimalist doesn't mean you don't buy things. The point is, when you buy a new item, you have to be aware of bringing the item into your life, not just feel the momentary impulse to buy it. Therefore, we need to manage items from the source. This brings us to the second rule, based on the principle of one in and one out, Joshua proposed the rule of one in and ten out. That is, to buy one thing, you need to dispose of ten things. Fancy a shirt? You can buy it, but he has to donate ten of his clothes. That way, his new purchases are well thought out, things he likes so much that he's forced to get rid of ten other things. In this way, while collecting good things, while getting rid of more things, Joshua has fewer and fewer things, which are getting better and better, and he can save money more and more. This principle is very solid and suitable for those who are just trying minimalism.
If you feel like most of the stuff in your home is getting on your nerves, you can also take something more radical, like packing the party. The other author of this book, Ryan, used this method to dispose of all the garbage at home in one step. A packing party is about pretending you're moving on a whim and you only have one day to pack your entire belongings. Ryan and Joshua spent eight hours packing everything in Ryan's kitchen, dining room, living room, and three bedrooms. Cover the furniture with blankets and lift them up when in use. After you pack it, just take it out when you need something. If you need a toothbrush today, you just take the toothbrush out of the case. Need shampoo and body wash in the shower? Take it out. Which dress do you want to wear? Take it out. You can set a time, such as 21 days, or 3 months. When the time comes, you can just dispose of what's left in the box. Although this method sounds too radical, Ryan has not produced anything since the 11th day. After day 21, 80% of his boxes were unopened. As soon as the 21st day came, he donated those unopened boxes directly, and immediately reaped a clean and fresh home. Why is minimalism, including the disconnection popular in East Asia in recent years, so obsessed with reducing things? Know that everything is placed not only in the room, but also in our hearts. For example, if there is a vase at home, we not only need to find a place to put it, but we also need to remember where is there a vase. Now a family can easily have more than 10,000 items, all of which are if we put it in our hearts, don't we naturally have less thoughts for business? It is more important to manage attention than to manage substance. And the thing that wastes our attention the most is browsing unnecessary information on the internet. Joshua, of course, noticed this too, and in order to free his attention, he performed a courageous experiment, he cancelled the internet at home. It sounds incredible, Joshua runs a popular website, how could he not have internet at home? If Joshua wanted to be online for long periods of time, he had to leave the house. He will go to the library, coffee shop, or other places with Wi-Fi, order a cup of coffee or some food, and complete all the things that require the internet in one go, such as publishing articles and querying information. If he usually has something he wants to watch online, he will save it on his mobile phone, and then check it on his computer when he is connected to the internet. Because in public, he will enter a highly conscious working state, and he will be very efficient in doing non-creative things, such as answering emails and consulting materials. And those creative things, like writing and designing websites, can be done completely without internet at home, and they will be done better. You might say, this is too extreme, I'm not going to cancel the internet, I need internet in my home. I need the internet to look up information for homework and work. But Joshua believes that these things can actually be done in public, besides that. At home, we spend more time on the internet watching videos, playing games, and buying things we don't really need on shopping websites. Joshua said, the internet is not bad, just like candy is not bad. But if you have to eat two bags of candy every day, you will get fat and sick very quickly. Therefore, I will not stockpile bags of candy at home. Just like I no longer have the internet at home. Regardless of whether the network is installed at home or not, it is important that we have a clear purpose for surfing the internet. Joshua believes that the internet is a life-enhancing tool, nothing more. He will not pay attention to anything on the internet that has nothing to do with making himself better. Joshua admits that he also watches funny videos, but when watching funny videos, he is also very clear that his goal is to get half an hour of carefree and smirking happy time. The key is whether we are using the internet consciously. Since then, he no longer craves the internet as much as before. In the past, he became confused when he was away from the computer and mobile phone. Now that he can write with great calm and concentration, he finds himself thinking things more clearly and fully. As mentioned just now, becoming a writer is his dream. Joshua wrote several best-selling books after canceling his home internet. He still has more time to do things he likes more, such as exercising. In the few years since he tried minimalism, Joshua has lost a full 70 pounds. He feels that his home has become very peaceful, and every time he returns home, he feels calm and relaxed, his mental state becomes more focused, and his emotions are less tense. In addition, Joshua has made several new friends by leaving home and working in public places. You see, even with a few small pieces of advice, 
we can feel that living a minimalist life actually takes a lot of determination and courage, and what Joshua and Ryan are doing is very brave. They dare to let go of things that most people dare not to let go of. They dare to let go of certainty and step out of their comfort zone. Pursuing a complete sense of security and certainty will trap oneself in the current state of life and fail to grow. We have to give up part of our sense of security in order to try more possibilities in life, and in that possibility, there may be the answer to the question you are confused about. In fact, Joshua and Ryan are reluctant to write too many suggestions for action in the book, because they are worried that people will be bound by rules and turn minimalism into a strict and dogmatic code of conduct. They believe that minimalists can have a lot of things, they can be successful in their careers, and they can be happy to make money. The key is that we have to think carefully and answer what is the most important thing, give the most time and energy to the most important things, and get rid of those substances and emotions that do not nourish us. And this is the minimalist life. Now, let's summarize. Minimalism is a thinking tool that encourages people to get rid of the unimportant things in their lives and focus on what matters most. We recognize two thinking tools of minimalism, one is the influence lever that enhances execution, and the other is the anchor that helps us reduce the burden of attention. There are several ways to manage things, such as seasonal rules for wardrobes, we can use the principle of 1 in and 10 out when buying, and if you want to live a minimalist life faster, you can try packing parties. The core idea of minimalism is to distinguish between the important and the unimportant, and boldly abandon the unimportant. The point of minimalism is to pay attention to your feelings from the beginning, and advocate the full use of objects as much as possible, which of course also implies the idea of not occupying unnecessary objects. But if you've been too busy breaking up and getting stuck with your family, or don't have time for the things you love, that's exactly what minimalism is against. At the heart of minimalism is not a zen-like lifestyle, pastoral poetry, or asceticism. Minimalism is an extreme personal parsimony with time, emotion, and attention. Minimalism was born in response to the information age and consumerism, and it points to a more efficient life. Minimalism believes that people should only do what they think is meaningful and like, and try their best to do it. The popularity of minimalism is actually an action by people to guard their attention, money, and time. This is the end of this episode of the show. What do you think about it differently? Welcome to leave a message to discuss with everyone. Hey, if you like our channel, please subscribe us. Haha, <laughs> remember to like it.